We've been hearing Adam Schefter say there's going to be four quarterbacks in the first seven picks. Uh, Mike Tannenbaum told me he thought in the first eight we were going to see four quarterbacks go. Um, you work with Chris Sims, and and he he has a very different quarterback ranking than some other guys. I, I believe um, it was Zach Wilson over Trevor Lawrence. Am I correct there? Yeah, he's got Zach Wilson at number one. He 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 still thinks the Jaguars could and will and should take Trevor Lawrence, but he's got Wilson at one. What what's going to be in your mind? I'm, I'm asking you to be a soothsayer here a little bit, but maybe somebody who moves in to that first uh, six or seven picks or, or, or somebody who picks a quarterback that you didn't expect to pick a quarterback? Well, it, it, look, when you, when you watch what the Bears and Washington have done over the past week by adding veterans at one-year $10 million contracts in Ryan Fitzpatrick and Andy Dalton, that removes the glaring watch-us-take-a-quarterback sign that otherwise would be attached to them when we start getting through the teens. And, and the question becomes, how many guys survive the first five, six, seven picks? How many quarterbacks are left? How many guys are sliding down the board? And I, I think that, you know, the teams most likely to surprise us are the teams where we think they have their situation taken care of. And they've got a one-year Band-Aid starter at a relatively reasonable price for a starter. Those are the teams that I would be watching if there's some guy they love, and of course they need to keep their mouths shut or put out misinformation. They don't want anyone to know exactly what it is they're thinking. But I'd watch those teams where we know there isn't an answer beyond this year, and the answer for this year is still a little bit tenuous. I think those are teams that potentially could move. But, you know, hey, there's three types of teams in the NFL. Teams that have franchise quarterbacks, teams that are desperately looking for franchise quarterbacks, and teams that have a guy that they're not quite sure whether or not he's going to be a franchise quarterback. And there's a lot of teams in category number two. Yeah. Even teams that have starters, they don't have franchise quarterbacks, and they're always looking for that guy. And one team I think that falls into that category is the New England Patriots right now picking at 15. They have Cam coming back for a year. A lot of people pegging maybe Mac Jones to go there. Um, talking to somebody earlier today said they wouldn't be surprised if Mac Jones fell out of the first round. But I just for all the quarterback-thirsty teams – I know Mac Jones doesn't knock your socks off, but I would be shocked if he fell out of the first round, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, he, he's the kind of guy who, once he starts creeping down through the 20s, there'll be somebody who swoops in to the bottom of the round to get him and to get that fifth-year option on his contract, something we've seen happen regularly, really, since the, the 2011 CBA that, that made every round but round one a four-year contract and gave that fifth-year option, whether it was Teddy Bridgewater, Lamar Jackson – guys go late in round one because it gives the team more flexibility. So I, I'd be stunned if Jones falls out of round one. There are people who think he still goes top ten. So, uh, wow. But that's part of the fun of it. And, you know, quarterbacks are what drive the league, and there's so many great young quarterbacks. There's even more reason now to fully and completely vet the young quarterbacks coming in. We're a long way removed from Jake Locker, Blaine Gabbert, Christian Ponder <laughs> taking 8, 10, and 12 in 2011, and that was a true roll of the dice. They know these quarterbacks a lot better now than they ever have before. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.